things that's been really interesting for me, I think about my grandfather when he taught me how to fish and sort of the practices that we developed and how much different that is today when I'm teaching my son how to fish. There's a whole body of knowledge that we have at our disposal now that we simply didn't have 20, 30, 40 years ago. So it's encouraging to me to see these young anglers on the water really wholeheartedly adopting tools, techniques, approaches like that with a really conservation forward approach. Anglers are able to go out further than they used to be, which means they can fish deeper than they have in the past, and that increases the chances of the fish they catch to experience barotrauma. So it's natural that this phenomenon has become more prevalent um, across all sectors of the fishing community, but I'll say anglers have really responded well um, and are taking the steps they need to take to reduce barotrauma in their own fishery. When I think about what it was about barotrauma that got me interested in that, it's really two things. It's the fact that there's a lot more anglers on the water today, and it's the fact that these anglers are fishing deeper today than they have been in the past. And so naturally, when you're fishing deep, that increases the chances for pressure-related um, changes to fish as they come to the surface, what we call barotrauma. And so it's really a ubiquitous issue. It's an issue that faces myriad different fisheries. Um, and so it's really important to look at from a variety of perspectives. We just used cameras and sequelizers and simply documented how many fish that are descended ultimately get eaten by a shark or a goliath grouper or a dolphin before they're successfully released. So a lot of our work recently has focused on depredation rates on fishes returned with descending devices. So in other words, if you use a descending device, what are the chances that that fish is gonna be eaten by a shark, a dolphin, a goliath grouper? And really, having done a thousand of these descents across the entire Gulf of Mexico, we were pretty surprised to see that depredation on descending devices is exceedingly rare, well less than 1%. So what that tells me is as an angler, you can feel very comfortable and very confident using a descending device, knowing that your fish is gonna make it down to the seafloor before it's eaten by a shark. You know, anglers and charter captains are really the original conservationists. And so when they have tools presented to them, things like a descender device, a tool that will help mitigate something like barotrauma, they're usually quick to adopt this type of technology. They realize the benefits, um, and they're advocates for the fishery that they partake in. So it's not surprising that anglers, charter captains, really folks from across the entire sector have been quick to adopt this technology.